Hey there guys, so let's talk about this upcoming heavyweight title eliminator between Huey Fury and Kubrat Pulev. So Huey Fury is going to be going over to Bulgaria to face Kubrat Pulev. Now, um, as I mentioned, this fight's an eliminator. I believe it's for the IBF title. I could be wrong about that, but if it's for the IBF title, then um, the winner of this fight will be in line for a potential shot at Anthony Joshua. So let's talk about this one. So, like I said, the fight's going to be in Bulgaria. I believe it's taking place next month. Um, how do I see this one going? Now, this fight, in my opinion, I think we've got two guys who stylistically are not really going to gel. I don't see this fight being particularly entertaining. And I have a clear idea of who I think is going to win. A very clear idea. Um, I could be wrong about it, but it's just how I see it at this point in time. I'm picking Huey Fury to win this fight. I think he's going to win the fight most likely by a decision. However, at the same time, when I really think about it, a stoppage wouldn't actually surprise me either. And I'll talk about that later, why a stoppage wouldn't exactly surprise me. First of all, Huey Fury going into this fight. Now, timing is everything in boxing. Okay, when you get a fight, it's important that you get that fight at the right time. You know, the, 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 the time that a fight takes place, you know, it's all to do with momentum. It, it can sort of shift the, shift the balance of a fight one way or the other. And also, as, as you guys already know, styles make fights. You've got two guys here who stylistically, both guys are tall, both guys are rangy, both guys like to work, work off the jab, work everything off the jab. Both guys like to move, and both guys are pretty classy boxers. Both guys have a, a, a vast amateur background, so we're going to have a technical fight here, a chess match. It's going to be a fight that's going to be primarily on the outside, and it's primarily going to be a jab fest, which is why I say it's not going to be particularly entertaining. But I suppose from a you know a hardcore boxing fan point of view, it's a, it's a fight for the hardcore fans. Now... Reason why I think Huey Fury has a has a huge advantage here. First of all, I mentioned how both of these guys like to work behind the jab, and both of these guys are tall. Both of these guys are rangy. Both of these guys box on the outside. Huey Fury is about three inches taller than Kubrat Pulev. He has a longer reach. He is much faster. Like I'm talking hand speed, foot speed. Huey Fury is considerably faster and considerably more agile than Pulev, who's a little bit more stiff and rigid, particularly in his older age. And Fury is considerably younger than than Kubrat Pulev. I believe Kubrat Pulev is like 37 now. He may even be older. Huey Fury, I believe, is only 24. So that there is a, a, big, a big gap in age here. You've got one guy who's considerably younger and fresher than the other. But not only that, Pulev... And I've noticed a lot of people haven't really been pointing this out who have been talking about this fight, but Pulev has been very inactive recently. He's been out of the ring since I believe April of last year when he fought when he fought Kevin Johnson, and uh, he didn't look particularly impressive in that fight. It was a yeah, I mean he won the fight, but he didn't look particularly great. It went twelve rounds, and you know uh, Kevin Johnson was kind of able to mess him around a little bit, and that was a, a completely out of shape. And completely washed up Kevin Johnson in that fight. It wasn't Kevin Johnson at his prime. So you have to take that into consideration. And also where I talk about the timing of this fight. Not being right for Pulev. What I also mean by that is. If you look at Pulev's opposition that he's been in with. Since the Klitschko fight. If you look at every single opponent he's fought. So let, let's go through who he's fought. And I'm just. I, I don't have box rec in front of me or anything like that. I'm just working off memory. Because I've, I've, I've followed pretty much the whole of Kubrat Pulev's career, and I've watched several of his fights live, so I remember who he's fought and when. Um, after the Klitschko fight, um, he he fought George Arias, I believe it was, and um, it was a fight, he just looked absolutely awful, and, and George Arias was a short, um, out of shape, you know, come forward, one-dimensional pressure fighter. He then fought, um, you know, he fought Derek Chisora, again, a, a shorter guy than Pulev, um, doesn't have the reach that, that Pulev had. A come forward one dimensional pressure fighter. Um, you know, he faced Samuel Peter again, short, completely past his prime. Sam Peter was a, a good fighter at his prime, but nowadays he's completely washed up. He was he was way out of shape. He'd been out of the ring for a long time himself. 
So um, Samuel Peter was, um, you, you know, another one of these short, one-dimensional guys who comes forward. And um, Pulev, like I said, was able to take advantage of that just by being taller and, and more well-schooled. And and then, again, Kevin Johnson, short, one-dimensional pressure fighter, out of shape, you know, couldn't match Pulev for height or movement or speed or um, punching technique or any of those things. That's over the course of a few years. And, and that last fight I just mentioned was about a year and a half ago. So Kubrat Pulev, ever since the Klitschko fight in 2014, which was four years ago now, it has been a long time, a long time since he fought anybody even remotely resembling Huey Fury. Um, all the guys he's fought have been short. All of them have been one-dimensional. All of them have been out of shape. All of them have been pressure fighters. Not a single one of them was a guy who was adept on the back foot. And uh, he's going to be fighting Huey Fury, a guy who does everything off the back foot. Okay, Huey Fury is a guy who moves very well on his feet. I mean, it's, he moves excessively. And I've been critical of Huey Fury about that in the past, about how difficult he is to watch just by the excessive movement and the excessive holding and the excessive, you know, just, just negativity from him. It's just so much negativity from, from Huey Fury in the ring, man. He's just really hard to watch. I can't even I can't even envision I can't even be, begin to imagine a worse style matchup for Kubrat Pulev at the stage of his career he's at. Now I'm sure some of you are going to tell me, well, didn't he be Alexander Dimitrenko? Didn't he be Alexander Ustinov? Certainly, but guys, that was a long time ago. That was Kulev, Pulev back when he was at his prime. I remember those fights. I watched those fights, and I remember. When he beat Dimitrenko, you know, he, he, it was a, a good performance. He won by 11th round knockout. He took him out with a jab. He took him out in style. Um, when he beat Ustinov, he, he battered him for 10 rounds before stopping him in the 11th. But what you got to understand is, after that Ustinov fight, Pulev had a, a year layoff after that fight. So I remember he was out of the ring for, I think it was 11 months or something. But it was nearly a year. And and since that fight, that you know, that was the last time that he actually was able to defeat a guy of that sort of style, you know, a guy who's taller than him and longer than him. And yeah, he did beat Tony Thompson. I almost forgot about that one, but that wasn't a particularly great performance. And again, that was Pulev at his prime. And he had some problems early on in that fight before Thompson started to fade, who we knew had stamina issues. Um, you know, Pulev, he was also dropped by um, Joey Abel. I remember that. He was knocked down in that fight. So um, he has shown vulnerabilities here and there. And, of course, when he fought Vladimir Klitschko. Now, this is why I say that I wouldn't be ultimately surprised if he was to get stopped. Because when he fought Klitschko, Pulev obviously went into that fight with a lot of confidence. He went into that fight. He was pretty much at his prime then. You know, he was, you know, he had a bit of momentum going into that fight. He got dropped in the first round, which is fair enough. I mean, Vladimir is a huge puncher. And he got dropped in the first round. But then after getting dropped and after realizing he was in a hole, Pulev became very wild in that fight, very scrappy. He was completely ignoring defense on the inside and, and that ultimately led, really led to him getting knocked out. And I think that if he's fighting Huey Fury, and let's say Huey Fury is dancing around him, moving around, flicking that backhander out there that he likes to throw because, you know, Huey Fury is one of these guys who throws a jab, which is technically illegal. Tyson Fury does the same thing, but, you know, he gets away with it for whatever reason, you know, he, he sort of flicks like a backhander with the jab, and if he's moving around Pulev, and Pulev can't land his jab, and I'm, I'm guessing Pulev will struggle to land his jab on, on Huey, because Huey is good at switching his stance, and I think that he'll be able to switch to southpaw and kind of negate the jab, and um, if he's been working with, with Tyson Fury on, on how, how he was able to negate Vladimir Klitschko's jab, I could see Pulev kind of emulate, or I could see Fury kind of emulate in that. And I think that Pulev will struggle to land his jab consistently. And I think that if he realizes that he's in a hole, I could see Pulev getting frustrated, just like he did against Vladimir. Getting frustrated, you know, sl swinging for the fences and getting himself sparked. I could see that happening. I mean, Huey, he's never been the biggest puncher, but. In his last fight against uh, Sam Sexton, I felt that he looked to be hitting harder than usual based on his punching technique. I think he's kind of 
I think the Joseph Parker fight woke him up a bit. And I think he realised after the Parker fight that he can't just run away for 12 rounds and hope to get a decision. So in this fight, I think I think Huey, I don't think he's going to be quite as um, quite as negative as he was in the Parker fight. I think in this fight, he will, he'll, he'll, he'll take the initiative a little bit more. And when... When when Pulev is um, you know trying to trying to hold the center of the ring and trying to pump that jab in his face, I can see Huey now and then like countering with the right hand and things like that. You know the kind of things he did against Sam Sexton because you notice Sam Sexton was holding the center of the ring and was throwing jabs and was trying to you know kind of bully. Well, not bully, but he was he was trying to use ring generalship to get the better of of Huey Fury, who was taller and quicker. And then Huey actually switched it up on him and was able to counter him and was able to drop him and had him out on his feet with an uppercut. So I think Huey has, has improved since the Joseph Parker fight. And I think that in this fight, I think the reason why Peter Fury and the team have allowed him to take this fight in Bulgaria is because they know something we don't. They probably know that Huey has worked on certain things and they know that he's capable of winning this fight and capable of winning it convincingly which is why they've agreed to go to Bulgaria so I think Huey's going to win this fight I really do I think he's going to beat Pulev like I said most likely by decision but I wouldn't be surprised at all by a stoppage um will, will the fight being in Bulgaria matter no not at all um Bulgaria it isn't a big boxing country um I know Pulev is popular there but let's be honest you know it's he, Pulev doesn't have a big promoter back in him I mean he left the Sauerlands a while ago um, you know, he was in dispute with them for a long time, I believe, just like most of their fighters are. Um, and I don't believe that he has any anybody really backing him. I know the epic sport guy who put up the purse bid to get the eliminator for Pulev in Bulgaria. I know that he obviously has that guy rooting for him, but I don't think that there'll be any anything dodgy with the scoring or anything because, you know, the, the IBF, if, if it's an IBF eliminator... You know, they're, they're our neutral party. They're the ones who will be providing the officials, I believe. So I think it'll be a fair fight. And I think that Huey will win the fight. Um, yeah, I'm picking Huey Fury to win by a decision or a late stoppage. So let me know what you think about this. And yeah, peace.